So Shipra, thank you very much for making time to share your insights into the future of leadership. But thank you very much, Nick. You're welcome. Before we walk into the future, can you tell us a little bit about your background? Where did you grow up? Thank you very much. I grew up in South Africa in the Eastern Cape area yeah. and um, raised and brought up by parents based in the Eastern Cape and studied in the Eastern Cape and uh, later in life moved to Johannesburg. And tell us, Shepra, what was your dream career when you grew up? So as a youngster, I was always fascinated about a law and I thought that's where I would end up being a lawyer. And I think as I grew up again, I, I, you know, I love clothes. So obviously I was uh, fascinated about being a fashion designer. But I think when I went to university, I then thought of accounting and also the, how broad it is. And that's where I ended up. And who inspired you in your early days? So I've I've had teachers that were quite positive. And, and I think as I grew up, they would, I suppose, see an outlook in me where they kept encouraging me and saying, you would make a success in your life. And, and for me, I think that's that was really what encouraged me to make sure that I do not fail them at a young age. And again, I was raised by parents really that were uh, quite diligent, hard workers and inspired us and taught us that, you know, our tenacity and diligence and hard work pays off. So really, that, that's where I, I started. And, and later in life, when I started my career, I was fortunate enough to join an organization called the International Women's Forum South Africa. And uh, it's called IWF, which is, uh, was founded in the USA in 1974. It was brought to South Africa by the First Lady, Mrs. Mbeki. And today, it connects more than 7,000, over 7,500 preeminent members worldwide in 35 countries, 73 forums, and it really shapes and inspires trailblazers of tomorrow. So I was fortunate enough to be a fellow at a young age. And uh, 20 years later, I'm a member of IWF and still inspired by the women that are part of IWF. Right. And Shipra, today you're the president of African Women in Business. You're the program director at the Grasa Marshall Trust. You're board member at the UNISA Graduate School of Business Leadership. Um, looking back over your career, can you maybe tell us, was there a turning point or a number of turning points? There was a turning point. So I started, as I said, that at university, I looked at accounting as a profession. So I started as a man management accountant. However, had so much interest in economic development. I always felt there's so much happening around me. Whilst I'm still, I'm, I'm busy counting, you know, uh, as we say, bins in accounting, which is a very noble profession. But then I wanted to, uh, you know, to look at what is it that I can give back to, to South Africa and what is it that I can give back to communities. I always felt that our parents sent us to, to school and got us educated so that we can give back. And I think part of what we do at IWF is that we say we, 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 we lift as we rise. So I felt there's more I could give within the continent. I felt uh, and I approached then my mentor, Veronica Devine, who's no more who really suggested that I find a, a role in economic development or in development. So that was for me a turning point because that was when I started working um, over the past 20 years, I've been working with mining companies, our, our mining communities. I've been fortunate enough in South Africa to be part of the inception of the mining charter when it started up, up post 94 and it has been amended twice and uh, making sure that we have economic development within mining communities and looking at how we can develop SMEs as well as women and youth within those communities. So really, I think that was my turning point because post that then I have been uh, involved over the past 20 odd years in economic development. And Shipra, what would you say is driving you today? I think what drives me, Nick, is really there's so much need and there's so much to be done. I always say that women before us were focusing uh, our older counterparts, like the founder of the Grasso Marshall Trust, Mrs. Marshall, focused on, on political emancipation and development. And they did that successfully. And I always say it is upon our generation to focus on financial or economic development and, and, and emancipation. So there's, there's still a gap when it comes to financial inclusion, and there's much more opportunities presented, whether by government, whether by the region, whether by the AU, but uh, 
these are not reaching the intended beneficiaries. So women are always lagging behind. And I always say until women are financially included, Nick, we will, women will continue not to have a voice. We are dealing with uh, different challenges. Women are dealing with different challenges, gender-based violence, financial inclusion, dealing with their businesses post-COVID. Businesses are dealing with their uh, uh, challenges within their businesses post-COVID-19. And, and when we look at um, a, a gender-based violence, for example, until women have a voice, which is based on financial inclusion, they cannot make different decisions. So in my view, I've always said, until this financial inclusion, and Mrs. Michelle always say, yeah. until women have assets, they will continue to be at a point of disadvantage. So that's what drives me. That's what makes me wake up every morning. So we were intentional when we founded the African Women in Business. We said that we want to create wealth for women in business. The Grasso Michelle uh, uh, Trust is intentional when it focuses on women's economic advancement to ensure that there is financial inclusion. Now, Shepra, as a prominent business leader on the continent, what does the future of leadership mean to you? So um, I think, Nick, we cannot uh, no longer ignore where we are. We live in the world of technology. The fourth industrial revolution is here. So women, are, uh, I mean, uh, leaders are faced with that. And we understand the, the, the requirements of the fourth industrial revolution and the need to reskill, not only to upskill, in 2019, I spent a great year within the business, the BRICS Business School. And what we were looking at was what does the fourth industrial revolution mean to business? And how and where is industry compared to, to you know, to, to implementing some of the requirements of the fourth industrial revolution? And most businesses were saying, well, they're nowhere close. And guess what? COVID hit us, and all of us had to look at business differently and how we operate. So leaders need to understand that hybrid structures are here to stay. And leaders need to understand that agility and turning things around at a, a fast pace, critical thinking and collaboration is really what's going to drive us to the future. As business, we also need to collaborate to ensure that our aspirations uh, we, the, or the aspirations we have regards to implementation, for example, of the African continental free trade will require us to collaborate will require the continent will work to work with each other, uh, with each, uh, I mean, countries to work with each other. Right. And Shepra, what have you learned from your own journey, your own leadership journey, that you consider most important for building future leaders, empowering future leaders? So from my own journey and the journey of future leaders that uh, we are working with, we have, uh, for example, now we have a cohort of about 36 senior leaders and women leaders that are going through a program with Duke Corporate University. And the focus there is what is required from future leaders. And we have their programs such as neuroscience of leadership and self-mastery. We have um, Hackathon, digital disruption in financial se in the financial sector. We looked at, I mean, these are mod modules that were not there before. We look at women leading globally. They operate locally, but focus is globally. We recently took women to Singapore to just expose them to what are the requirements of future leadership. So really from my own journey, what I've seen is that there has been a shift and we needed to understand what that shift means. We needed to understand, as I've said, the role of, of the fourth industrial revolution within our businesses. And we also needed to, to understand that we are going to operate differently and how do we adapt fast to those changes. Now, talking about changes, changes, uh, Shipra, and challenges, what is your advice for future leader, leaders in terms of challenges? What are some of the biggest challenges they should expect to encounter in their career? So, um, and, and I've mentioned this re recently when I was talking to leaders, that we are managing hybrid stru uh, structures. I mean, globally, that has been there, but in Africa, that, that is a new, uh, those are new structures. We want to make sure they're successful. We want to make sure that there's an understanding on what the drivers and the core business of our industries are while managing teams remotely. And also ensuring that there's agility, also ensuring that we are with the hybrid structures, there's accountability from staff members. So we're really managing a different dynamic altogether. And the challenges has been to make sure that that, that is successful, has been to make sure that uh, staff members are accountable, this deliver at the right time, and also making sure that we're not going to have at some point to, ups, uh, to upskill, but in area in some areas we are going to have to reskill. So we're really oper operating at a very uh, interesting times, 
and really adapting to those is going to be key for us as leaders. Now, Shepra, talking about upscaling, rescaling, if you were to design a curriculum for future leaders, what are some of the new skills you would want to factor in? I'm, I'm fortunate enough to sit as a, as, a, as a committee member and a member of the BRICS skills, uh, future skills. And, and recently we were requested as South Africa to write what we think are the future skills that need to be added to some of the curriculum. And in South Africa, we're fortunate that we have made some changes within the TVET colleges. But I was interested to see about, I think, over 50 that uh, China uh, proposed. And we also propose quite a number from South Africa, but I won't give you that long list, Nick. Right. But I think a few things that, that were there, I mean, um, technology, for example, which is quite critical. Emotional intelligence has also come up, which is going to help leaders to manage uh, the future. And, and funny enough, this cultural intelligence, we, we're managing organizations or, or people that are from different parts of the world. And one needs to, ma uh, to manage a team uh, from those different parts to understand the culture. And, and critical thinking is key, which I think that is something that we need to teach from a young age. But more than anything, I think our collaboration I've mentioned is some of the things that we need to look at. Now, Shipra, as a mentor to future leaders, can you maybe share a success story or two where you mentored an upcoming leader and that person took your advice to heart? I've, uh, because of groups of women and thousands of women that I work with, so I, I happen to have a very broad uh, structure of mentorship. So yeah. I always prefer to have inf informal mentorship, but follow through to see if women are successful in what I advise. But recently, it was quite um, uh, in, in, encouraging for me to see somebody that uh, I've been working very close with that I've encouraged to consider working remotely. And uh, given the skills that they have and the previous skills that they have, um, um, uh, the, the, the field that where they're trained, and they took that to heart, and they're making a success of their career remotely. They even move countries and are actually looking at uh, at taking on more roles within that space. And Shipra, looking back over your own leadership journey, who are the kind of role models of leadership that you've encountered and that you would recommend future leaders should learn from? Nick, I'm fortunate enough, I, I work with a number of women in different parts of the continent and globally. So I, I listen to women of stature and I really look up to authentic leaders and women of stature, not one in particular, because I work with so many. But uh, working with hundreds of really unsung heroes in, in, in the parts of the world from and, and different parts of the continent, they all have, I've learned, they all have wealth of experience in leadership. They are authentic and they've taught me authentic and ethical leadership. And you see how they manage their communities. You see how they're trusted by their communities. And you see how their communities rely on them without any accolades and degrees that they have. They have wealth of experience in leadership and they really yield the power by just convincing and also working with women. And recently I was in Cameroon and I met a wonderful woman who said, I've got a team of 4,500. During COVID, we thri were thriving because we had a, a, what they call the, I think it's uh, uh, junkies in, uh, in, in Cameroon, but it means village banking. It's a good name. It means village banking. But she said to me, Shifra, we, we're a group of women. We've got, got $400,000 in the bank right now, and we operate together. And one of the women uh, successfully did this and that in the, within their businesses. And you just see how these women you know, uh, uh, can be able to work with communities can be able to manage communities and, and the background with, without probably formal background, but it just for me has been amazing because that's where I then learned from. One of the women recently who is based in, um, in Zimbabwe, Dr. Lucia, who also manages our new faces, new voices or women in finance said to me, we need to, uh, to appreciate the space we are in because without, without the mandate we have from these women behind us, we are nothing. So truly, as I say to you, that it, it's been a number of role models that I look up to, women of stature, women that really look at authentic leadership, ethical leadership that have really convinced me. And within IWF, once again, we've got a number of those. And Shipra, how can our listeners connect with you? And where should they follow your thought leadership? So I, as I said that, you know, we, we live in the world of tech. So I am on, on social media platforms. I am on uh, only two, Nick, uh, and I'm, I'm getting there. 
LinkedIn and Facebook, so I, uh, uh, listeners can be able to, uh, to, to follow me through that. And uh, as I said that, you know, uh, the world is moving in a, in a fast pace, so we have to adapt, and I am adapting slowly. All right. And Shipra, last but not least, what is your advice for the millions of learners across Africa, across the world, who are now looking to complete their school uh, and, and, and looking to enter a career, looking to enter the world of work? What are maybe one or two success factors that they should consider? I always say, and, and I think that's what I've been taught, if it doesn't, if, if, if it's what you're passionate about, it doesn't feel like work, like work. What I'm doing is who I am. I always said I started at the, at the age of nine years old to open up one of my mother's uh, uh, suitcases and I gave to the community. And that's when I understood that I'm there to serve the communities. So do something that you're passionate about and then it doesn't become a job. It becomes your, your, your passion. You wake up every morning looking forward to do that. But do something of service. Whenever you offer service to the world, it pays back. So I'll, I'll just suggest that they look at, at that. Well, thank you, Shipra, so much for sharing your insights and your wisdom into the future of leadership and being such an inspiration to so many future leaders. Thank you so much, Nick, and thank you for the opportunity. Really appreciate it.